Hey guys, how you doing? Dan here and it is great to see you all again. Today I've got another fairly quick video for you guys. Again, we're in an Adobe piece of software, this time Adobe Lightroom, because there has been a new update, an update which I think many of us have been waiting for for quite a long time. We've got a brand new masking tool within Lightroom. This allows us to select skies, select subjects, and we've also got a new layer mask system so we can move masks around, invert masks. We can do a lot of masks, a lot of what we can kind of do in Photoshop. So I think the best thing to do is open up Lightroom and we'll have a quick look at where the masking tool is now and a quick look at how to use it. And we're also going to have a look at how well it works with a range of different images, including bird images, cat images, landscape images, people images, and a couple of others. So it should be a fairly good test on these images. Now guys, this should work in Adobe Lightroom Classic and CC. I'm going to be on Classic today. So you're going to notice at the top right of the Adobe Lightroom, the linear gradient is missing, the radial gradient is missing, and the brush tool is missing. It's all still here but in a slightly different space. So all you have to do now is press this button here and that's going to bring up the new mask options. So in here we've got our select subject and select sky which I'm going to come on to in this video and you've also got the old way of doing it with the brushes, the gradients and the ranges which I'm going to come on to as well. These are super super handy to kind of refine your masks. Now you'll notice we don't have a mask at the moment so let's quickly get one on. Let me show you how quick and easy this is. Um, so we're just going to select subject and hopefully Loki will be selected. So Loki is my cat, leave a like down below if you think he's cute, I definitely think he is. Um, and his name is definitely right, he can be extremely mischievous at times. But anyway, we've got our mask, that was super, super quick, and we've also got our new mask window. So this is where we can start to work with our masks extremely creatively. We can add masks together, we can subtract masks together, we can intersect masks, we can also duplicate masks, delete masks, and we can also invert masks, and we can also rename them so we can keep everything nice and organized. And as you'll notice, it looks fairly similar to Adobe Photoshop at this stage. So here we have got Loki, and as you can see, the mask is, let's say, 95% there. We've missed a little bit of his head, and his whiskers down here aren't quite, um, well, it's taking up a bit of a wall as well. It's not just his whiskers. But something super impressive about this image is what Loki's body is actually out of focus and it's just his head in focus. This is due to the nice shallow depth of field of the 85mm lens, but Lightroom has still found all of Loki, um, which is, I think, quite impressive. To toggle the mask on and off, to tap O on the keyboard, H will hide the mask points. So you see we've got a subject mask here, so that's hidden and back again, and S will just show you all masks on the scene. Um, I've only got one on this image at the moment, so only this one is showing up. But if you do have more, it will show you where all of them are, which is quite useful. As we're saying, this isn't quite perfect, so let's make it perfect. So it's quite good with this image because we need to add a little bit of mask to Loki, and we also need to subtract a little bit. So this is where we can use our tools here. So let's use our Add tool, and this time I think the Brush tool will be more useful, but you can use all the other ones as well. So in Lightroom, with the brush tool selected, if you use right bracket or left bracket, that's going to increase or decrease the size of the brush. And you also get all of your normal brush options here. And then I'm just going to colour this little bit of his fur in. There we go, that's looking great. And now we need to get rid of this little bit down here. So this time I'm just going to press subtract and this time I'm going to use a color range. So a luminance range works with brightness values and a color range works with color values. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select the wall and I'm going to just change this refine and just so you can see, there we go. We've now got this bit of wall back and Loki is still masked. And with this add brush, I'm just going to slowly go down his back here and just bring a little bit of this back in as well. So there we go, we got a really decent mask of Loki now, which only took a very few seconds to generate. And now is what we can start to do is we can use our mask options just as we normally would do, maybe to bring the exposure up just a little bit on Loki. And we can also maybe bring the contrast up as bit, a bit as well. So we can make some really localized adjustments here extremely quickly. Now, let me show you another animal. This one, I want to show you a really, really useful way of using these masks. So I've already generated this mask. Again, all, of, all I did was I pressed um, select subject and it found the bird perfectly. 
So this was a dove captured at Reddish Vale Park. It's a ring neck dove. You can see it here. Um, and as you see, we've got a very nice mask. Now is what you can do, you can change the color of the mask by pressing this blue box here, and you can change it to any color you want. Now, red is default, but if you've got a lot of red in your scene, it might be better to change it to something a little bit different. But for now, I'm gonna stick with this nice blue. Now, so what we can do here is with our options, press these three dots, we can rename the mask. So I'm gonna call this Dove. And then we can click on these three dots again and press duplicate. And then is what we can do is on the duplicated layer, we'll rename this to background. And then here on subject, we've got three dots here as well. And we can then invert that. So now we've got a background layer and we've got a Dove layer, which is brilliant because now is what we can do is we can bring up the brightness on the Dove very easily. Oh God, not that much, just a tad. And then on the background, we can bring the exposure down a little bit, not too much. Maybe bring that tint down just to make them a bit greener at the background. And maybe just drop the texture just a tad, just to make that bokeh really, really smooth. But again, very localized adjustments in a very quick and easy way. All generated from one mask, which was duplicated and then inverted. So as you can see, this is a super powerful tool. You can also turn masks on and off as well, just by pressing the eye button here. This image was actually edited in the old version of Lightroom. Um, well, I'm saying old, I mean the version which was here yesterday. Um, but it did bring my masks which I generated in. So they were still there, which is very much ideal. Let's have a look at people. So let's chuck Lightroom a complicated task. So this is an image of a jet skier at Sail Water Park. I was very surprised by this image because I thought it was going to be a right mess <laughs> with the mask. But let me show you. Select subject. It's going to do it very quickly and there we go we've got the jet skier in a you know seconds and it's done a very good job the only thing wrong with this is this little bit of water down here so again i'm just going to subtract from the mask using the brush now illuminance would probably work on here as well but i find the brush just to be nice quick and simple just to tidy up these little errors now let me show you where this tool doesn't work quite as well because everything so far has been quite um quite great to see it's this image here. So this is a lady playing darts. Now let me show you what happens here. Select subject. Now it doesn't just select her, it selects all of the subjects around her. Now I imagine in the future this will be fixed and I imagine you will be able to select individual subjects within the frame. But again, it's not the end of the world because it's what we can do is use our subtract button. And again, we can just brush these people out. So I'm just increasing the size of my brush. Let's get all of these people out of our mask. Now this building was actually quite strange to photograph in because, let's just get rid of this little bit here as well. Um, yeah, so this is quite a strange building to photograph in because it actually looks really well lit with all these LEDs, but because the LEDs, he had a flicker and it was really, really hard to catch the image within the flicker. Even with changing the shutter speed, I couldn't quite figure out the exact um, shutter speed. I needed the synchro scan mode of the GH5. That would have been ideal. Um, but there we go. We've got a mask now. And again, we can just bring the exposure up on her a little bit just to make her stand out. But I do hope Adobe Lightroom will fix these ones in the future. I'm sure they will do, because um, it does make sense to be able to pick individual subjects within a scene. And make sure to leave a comment down below with what you think of Adobe's new masking system. As you can tell, I absolutely love it. And now we've seen it working with animals, we've seen it working with people, both successfully and unsuccessfully. Let's have a quick look at some landscapes. Now, I thought this image would trick Lightroom because it's got a reflection off the sky in the water. Now, we've also got a really nice sunburst here, which was captured by lowering the, lowering the aperture whilst taking the image. So it was, I think, around F18, maybe F16. F20 it was, um, and that gets the nice sunburst. Um, but yeah, I wasn't too sure how this was gonna work because we have, the sky is pretty much reflected, but Lightroom must know this because select sky down here in the mask tool, and there we go, the mask is selected just for sky. Extremely well as well. Now in this scenario, you probably would want to select the sky and the reflection fairly similarly. I can't imagine you'd, you'd be wanting to make too many adjustments to the sky, which weren't replicated in the reflection, but it just shows how well this does work in this scenario. One more I want to definitely show you is this one. Um, so we do need a slight crop on here actually. Um, it was a little bit too much. Let's go maybe something like that. 
yeah, that's quite nice. Um, but this one, again, we've got multiple things we can mask. So first of all, let's mask the sky. Select sky. There we go, done, and that's done a very good job. We've got some people down here, which we might want to mask as well. So let's add a select subject. Brilliant, it's got them very well. Again, not perfect, but considering they're a little bit smaller in the scene, I'm more than happy to just quickly go in and fix them up a little bit. There we go, so we won't get any weird halos around these people. And that's done them quite well. And we've also got a um, this green here as well. So what we could do is we can create a new mask and do a color range. Click on the green and let's just bring that back just a bit so it's just for green selected, that greeny yellow, something like that. So now we can do the sky. Let's bring the exposure down a tad. Now we can do the people. Let's bring the exposure up a tad. There we go, something like that. And we've also got a green, which we could increase the saturation and hue off here. So let's saturation up a tad, and we could change the hue to something a little warmer, a little more autumnal, something around there. Maybe bring the saturation down a bit. Again, these are super quick edits, but I'm hoping you get how powerful this all is together. Um, it's super, super useful just to have everything all in organized layers and very quickly edit very individual parts of your image. Don't know what that was then. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for landscapes. With this image, let me just quickly show you, even though there's no um, people or animals selecting the subject, still got this um, water tower in the middle. Didn't get the bridge, but again, we can quickly add the bridge with the mask if we want to. And I just want to show you one more for deer. So select subject on this one. Very quickly do this. There we go. Now, as you can see, we've got a very good mask on the deer. The only thing we're not quite right with is this little area here and this up here. Now, hopefully we can get rid of both of them with a subtract and a luminance range. So I'm just gonna click on the snow and Let's, there we go, we've got, it's done it instantly. Um, so we've, this area has been wiped out and this one up here has, and our deer is still looking fairly good. We've now lost his mouth and a little bit of his antlers. So again, we'll just go in with our ad brush. You also get shortcuts to them as well. Option K for the brush. Let's just color these little areas back in. Brilliant. Um, yep, there's a bit of his antler as well. Perfect. So now we can make adjustments to just the deer. And if we duplicate this, we can also then um, do it to the background too. But guys, I hope you're going to enjoy this Lightroom update as much as I am. It's so, so powerful. It's not going to be used on every image. And you know, there are still the original masking tools which people are used to. But the fact you can very quickly just isolate your subjects and do a quick edit on them, I think it's going to be really, really useful. As I've mentioned a few times in this video, it is by no means perfect. We do need to be able to select individual subjects in our scenes, which I'm sure it will happen. I, I, I can't see it not doing. And it does, doesn't quite get everything right. But the fact you've got the add and subtract mode to quickly get into your masks and quickly edit them is perfect. I love that you can organize your layers and rename them, duplicate them and invert them. It means you can generate very powerful masks very very quickly but guys i'm getting to the end of this video and if you did like this video please like comment and subscribe to my channel that'd be absolutely amazing thank you and i do very honestly greatly appreciate it but guys thank you very much for watching i do greatly appreciate it and i'll see you all in the next video cheers